And good evening, everyone. Welcome to Come Together, a pure Michigan relief effort to help our tourists, tourism and hospitality workers around the state of Michigan. I'm John Gonzalez from MLive.com and Michigan's Best, and uh, I'll be your co-host this evening. I'm in Grand Rapids, but joining us from Detroit is our good friend, Tom Dalton. It's me once again, Tom Dalton from Under the Radar, Michigan on PBS television. And yeah, John, here we go. Round two, take two, night two the second installment of this great event. And as you said, we have two hosts and one great event, just like we have this T-shirt that says two peninsulas, one pure Michigan that you can actually get when you donate tonight. So I want to make this point up front. Um, do try to donate uh, and share this with you. This is a Facebook Live event. So please try and like us. If you see something you like, like it. Share this link with your friends. And if you get a chance, donate and get one of these shirts. Um, and right now I have to ask my good friend, John, about the chapeau that's adorning his brain holder. That's you, John. <laughs> yes, I know that. Uh, happy single to Mile as well uh, to all of our friends all over watching right now. Uh, this is a big day in the Gonzalez household, not because it's a uh, single to Mile. We'll talk about what single to Mile is, but it's just a chance to celebrate uh, uh, Mexican culture with food and drinks. Right, Tom? Right. Big day and big hat. <laughs> well, yeah. And I actually was watching a movie today on uh, the Turner Classic Movies, and I got about 20 minutes into it, and I realized this is the story of Cinco de Mayo. I, now I actually understand what it's all about. Well, we're going to get to that. We've got so much in store, folks. Uh, share this with your friends if you have those that maybe maybe haven't heard about this event. Because yeah. we have, uh, we're going to check in with Dave Lorenz from Travel Michigan. We're going to uh, check in with a good friend of ours in Bel Air, Michigan. We have some great music in store, and uh, we hope you enjoy it. Yeah. So right now, I I, I think we're going to enjoy some some music, aren't we, John? That's true. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I have had. I have hat envy now. I have the wrong <laughs> hat on. Uh, good to see you, my friend uh, Gabriel Estrada. The uh, Chato del Norte is joining us. And let's kick things off with a very familiar Mexican classic. All right, here we go. Let's see here. Let's get the phone back up again. Fire that <laughs> thing go. up. Here we go. De la sierra morena, cielito lindo vienen bajando. Un par de ojitos negros, cielito lindo de contrabando. De la sierra morena, cielito lindo vienen bajando. Un par de ojitos negros, elito lindo de contrabando. Ay, 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 canta y no llores, porque cantando se alegran, cielito lindo, los corazones. Ay, 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 que viva México. Oh, I, I, oh wrong hat. I'm sorry. Hold on. That is the wrong hat. El lunar que tiene cielito lindo junto a la boca. No se lo des a nadie, cielito lindo. Que a mí me toca ese lunar que tienes, cielito lindo, junto a la boca. No se lo des a nadie, cielito lindo, que a mí me toca. Ay, 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 ay. Canta y no llores, porque cantando se alegran, cielito lindo, los corazones. Ay, 
<laughs> is, this I, say, is this where I say ole? <laughs> I'm glad they kept me off the camera because I was singing along and I can't a Domingo, Cielito lindo, te vengo a ver. Domingo, Cielito lindo para volver. De domingo a domingo, cielito lindo, te vengo a ver. Cuando será domingo, cielito lindo para volver. Everybody now. Ay, 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 ay. Canta y no llores. Porque cantando se alegran, cielito lindo, los corazones. Here we go, one more time. Ay, 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 canta y no llores. Porque cantando se alegran, cielito lindo, los corazones. Sí, señor. Sí, señor. Well, I'm... Thank I'm you. That was wonderful. I'm Irish Italian, so maybe you two guys can explain the real meaning of Cinco de Mayo to people. Because, I mean, a lot of people celebrate it, and they still have no idea what it is. It's a lot of people have the misconception that it's like uh, Mexican Independence Day, but it's not. Mexican Independence Day is actually September 16th, which is their equivalent to our Fourth of July. Uh, but um, Cinco de Mayo basically it's a battle uh, that was won in in, uh, in Puebla, Mexico. Uh, where they defeated the French army, and uh, that's why it's it's a big um, it's it's a big battle that was. So think of it kind of like our think of it like our Gettysburg, where it it turned the forces around and, and it changed things uh, in the history. And um, the Ameri and the Americans were actually allies, weren't they, in the battle? You know, I'm not sure to be honest with you. I don't want to misquote that. Well, they were they were in the movie in the movie I watched today. They were so <laughs> that's good enough for me. They actually, the battle was uh, during the Civil War. Yes, uh, but it wasn't until after the Civil War that the Americans came in and kind of helped uh, helped uh, the battle along and helped Mexico right. win against the French. Now, but the cool thing about that is that you know this up to this point, Mexico was having a hard time, and this battle is a historic part of Mexican history. But uh, Gabriel, we thank you so much for for doing this song for us. Real quick, you're part of this restaurant industry, this tourism and hospitality people that have been impacted by COVID-19. You're used to being in restaurants and performing on the weekends and sometimes weeknights. Yes, yes, I am. It has been a little difficult. Um, but, uh, you know, and I've had a lot of shows that canceled all me here recently in March, April and May. Um, usually during this time for Cinco de Mayo, I usually go to Chicago and sing at four different uh, assisted living areas and, and nursing homes because they celebrate Cinco de Mayo and they have fiestas for lunch. And obviously they were all canceled because, you know, they're more susceptible of getting sick and everything. And I understand completely. Um, for the restaurants, I do sing at a local restaurant here in Grand Rapids. And of course, with, with everything being shut down, that is kind of a, a hard thing. Um, but other than that, I mean, I'm getting calls here and there, but I'm doing a lot of social distancing to sing. Like I had like two shows today and uh, it was just, you know, make sure I was like six, 10 feet away from the people. You know, they all had masks on and stuff like that just for the, for their protection, too. Um, but it, it's been a little hard, but it's okay. I mean, I'm getting through it. Well, wearing that hat is probably hard to get close to people anyway. <laughs> <laughs> this, this one that I'm wearing is it's more authentic. This, is, this one was made in Mexico City. Yeah. Um, hats like these aren't like the ones you get like at the airport and stuff like that. These cost anywhere from $100 to $200 American wow. money. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and they're 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 basically um, uh, with Works metallic thread. Yeah, oh yeah, and they come in different colors, different uh, you know designs and everything. So I got three different sombreros um, that I use for, and I got like six different because the chattels you can see here the the mariachi uniform a little bit. So this is what I wear whenever I go to shows. That's so, that's beautiful, and that's costly. Those are expensive as well. Yeah, the suits. They could run like this one that I got here because the way the exchange is right now for the Mexican peso, just dollar the Mexican peso. So right now it's it's hovering between twenty four to twenty five pesos to the American dollar. So for us 
to exchange our money. It's it's like we're we're making big money in pesos. So um, when I got these made at the time, it was like twenty pesos to the dollar. So this suit here in American money cost me like around five hundred dollars. You know, now it's probably closer to three seventy five American money. So. You know, for American, for us to exchange money to pesos, it's good. But for the exchange pesos back to American dollars, it's it's a little different. So, do you have Do you have one more song for us before we move on to some other things? Yeah, um, I'll do another one. Uh, it's called Mexico Lindo Querido. That's one that's that's usually sung around this time for uh, Cinco de Mayo, and especially you know, like I said, Mexican Independence Day. And um, I forgot was it Tim, Tom, Tom. Is that his name right, Tim? Tom, Tom. Yeah. Tom. Tom. I'm sorry. So you probably recognize the first song. Oh the yeah, Lito Lindo. Yeah, because but I always because make a Frito joke Lay stole it. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna bring up my bag of Fritos. I was gonna say this. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, yeah, it was I, 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 I'm the Frito Bandito. Oh, yep. <laughs> so that was made back in the day. So, uh, but yeah, I'm gonna sing Mexico Lindo for all for for everybody who's watching, and uh, thank you. Uh, both of you for having me uh, to perform for you guys here tonight, and uh, hopefully uh, everybody's being safe, especially the healthcare workers and everybody out there who's been affected by this virus. Um, I'm praying for you guys, and hopefully everything will get better here. Thanks. All right, take it, take it away, Gabriel Estrada, right. El Charo del Norte from Grand Rapids, Michigan. You can find him on Facebook, and he's doing parties, quinceañeras, fiestas, events everywhere. All right, here we go. Voz de la guitarra mía Al despertar la mañana Quiero cantar su alegría A mi tierra mexicana Yo le canto a sus volcanes A sus praderas y flores que son como talismanes del amor de mis amores. México lindo y querido, si muero lejos de ti, que digan que estoy dormido. Y que me traigan aquí, que digan que estoy dormido. Y que me traigan aquí, México lindo y querido. Si muero lejos de ti. ¡Ay, ay, ay! ¡Ay, ay! Y cae viva México, sí señor. Ah, uh, viva México, <laughs> viva México. <laughs> Gabriel, thank you so much. Yeah, Gabriel, thank you. Very you. Thank you. I, I, I feel... <laughs> <laughs> it's not over. <laughs> 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 Why not? Y que me cure esta tierra. Es una de hombres cabales, voz de la guitarra mía. Al despertar la mañana, quiero cantar su alegría a mi tierra. Mexicana, México lindo y querido, si muero lejos de ti, que digan que estoy dormido y que me traigan aquí. Que digan que estoy dormido y que me traigan aquí, 
México lindo y querido, si muero lejos de ti. Sí, señor. Sí, señor. Arriba, arriba. I think we won't get there, Tom. Thanks again, Gabriel. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so You're much. You're welcome. Thank you again, guys. <laughs> Well, if uh, if you're just tuning in now, um, just to remind you, this has come together. It's a relief effort for uh, hospitality workers all across Michigan. Uh, it's uh, M Live, Under the Radar Michigan, and Pure Michigan got together to do this, and it's happening all week long, seven until eight p.m. on the M Live Facebook page. Uh, and again, it's live. There's no Annette; she couldn't make it. Um, so, uh, if you can if you can give, please do so. You can get this T-shirt right here, just like mine. Um, and it all goes to a very good cause. Uh, and share this with your friends as well on Facebook. And if you if you see something you like, like it. Uh, now, John, this next guy we're going to have on, I am so excited to talk to because when it comes to making beer, he is a total Michigan rock star. Um, and I should know because I'm enjoying his adult malted beverage as we speak. <laughs> um, his name is Joe Short of uh, Short's Brewery. And there he is. Hey, Joe. Hey, guys. Good to see you. Yeah, you Wonderful. are without a doubt, my friend, probably one of the most creative brewers on the planet. I mean, you make beer with tomatoes, you make beer with candy, you make, I mean, there's some, now my my go-to beer is your Bel Air Brown. It's a great uh, go-to beer to have. Uh, nice oh. and malty. Yeah, because I actually go to your place a lot. And the, 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 food, the, food, the, food, yeah, the food is phenomenal. Uh, the people are phenomenal. And speaking of your people, you've got a wonderful staff. Um, yeah, how, absolutely. how are they all doing right now through this whole crazy thing? So the staff is doing, um, they're troopers. I mean, we're doing as good as we can be doing over here. And uh, we're staying busy. Our to-go food order business is uh, is doing pretty good considering. And uh, we do uh, delivery. We'll deliver uh, food in then like a 15-mile radius of the pub. And uh, we do curbside and uh, pickup orders. And we're always running specials throughout the week. So everything from growler fills. Uh, today we're doing a, uh, a Cinco de Mayo uh, taco kit. And you get a 25% discount if you're from Antrim County. Uh, so we, we're really doing uh, everything that we can think of to, to keep everybody busy. And uh, at the same time, healthy and safe. So we've got uh, safety measures in place. Um, as well. Joe, now obviously uh, at Michigan's Best and MLive.com, we know you really well. Amy and I named you Michigan's Best Brewery back in 2013, and you've lived up to that, uh, you know, uh, award since then, no question about it. But uh, can you give people just a little uh, brief background history of, of how you have grown this business since, you know, you first opened? And also tell us exactly where you're located, because a lot of people might not know Antrim County or even where Bel Air sure. is. So Antrim County is in uh, northwestern lower Michigan. It's just uh, northeast of Traverse City uh, by the pinky there. And uh, we're surrounded by, uh, actually Bel Air sits in the nexus of the chain of lakes. So in, in, to the north of us, you've got Intermediate Lake that runs all the way uh, through another series of rivers and lakes all the way up to Ellsworth. And then from Bel Air uh, south, basically it kind of wraps around to the west. Um, you've got uh, Lake Bel Air uh, to Torch Lake, uh, into Elk Lake, into Grand Traverse Bay through Elk Rapids. So um, we're in a little tiny, uh, beautiful little village called Bel Air. Uh, that's where our pub started back in 2004. And uh, we opened our production facility in Elk Rapids in 2009. Um, yeah, we've. Uh, like I said, we've been kind of cranking beers out of this place since 2004. And because Bel Air's on your way to nowhere, um, we try to do stuff um, that would kind of grab people's attention and give them a reason to to make the, the long trek out to this little tiny community. And um, part, of, uh, part of that success is not only the, the quality and the care we put on the products, but the team we've assembled. And like we've talked about earlier, uh, we've built this really amazing group of uh, people who I'm really fortunate to work alongside and 
we have a lot of fun um, doing what we love to do and living where we want to live. Um, so that's kind of the, the brief snapshot. And of course, making beer is probably one of my favorite things, but we make cider and now hard seltzer as well. Well, like you were saying, you've created a whole culture up there, a whole mindset. Um, just when you walk in the place, well, first of all, it's a 120 year old building that I guess you, you started this when you were 22 years old before you were old enough to know better. <laughs> and you've yeah. turned it into this Mecca. Um, you've actually put Bel Air on the map and it's now a destination. Like I said, my family, I've been up to your place so many times and it's not really on the way to anywhere, but we just sort of managed to get there because the food's so good. The people are so friendly. The atmosphere is great. Um, and your beer profile is bizarrely, incredibly varied. I mean, how many beers do you make? So our, our portfolio since 2004 has probably grown, I think, upwards to the 600 marker. Um, <laughs> But because, you know, we were kind of the first, the first microbreweries um, in this part of the state, you know, we, we really try to spread um, the spectrum. Um, you know, we love to, to tout our, our Willy Wonka type spirit, but at the end of the day, like Locals Light, um, American Light Lagers, our number one selling beer, because um, that was one of the first beers that we've ever made because I wanted my dad and my grandpa to drink Locals Light, but then I wanted to draw people who were really curious about um, exploring what fermentation could be. So those were the guys trying Bloody Mary beer and black licorice lager and, um, and Huma even back then um, kind of put us on the map as far as IPAs go. Joe, um, let's talk a little bit about the culture you've created because <clears throat> Tom's right. Uh, there's a certain culture up in Bel Air in that area of Michigan. Um, your anniversary party and those special events you do are some of the best parties in the state of Michigan. And I know you had to delay this year's anniversary party, but uh, tell us a little bit more about, cause you care about a lot of things, your, your water, uh, the natural environment, you guys are behind a lot of causes up there. Yeah, so we've always, um, I guess, so one of the terms I kind of use now is like we're, we've been crafting a community and we're brewing this world together. Um, sort of in the spirit of this conversation, like we're all um, in this together. Um, we're neighbors, we're all neighbors sharing, you know, and living in the same neighborhood. And really when you boil it down, our neighborhood is planet earth, but we all got to start from, from where we live and, and where we reside. And so the community in Antrim County has been very important to us because we take a lot of pride into where we live and that being the nexus of the chain of lakes, uh, fresh water is very important to us. Um, and then being um, a business leader in this community, we really try to be creative in the way that we can draw uh, attention and bring a business that helps everyone grow. You know, we try to help bring the tide up. So it was a bummer that we didn't have anniversary party this year because that's a real uh, economic injection to all of our neighbors around here when it's slow and, and it's also when taxes are due. And I remember this back when I first started is that we, we kind of started this party as sort of the, all right, uh, winter bills are due and uh, we're in survival mode. So what are we going to do? Well, let's celebrate surviving another year. And that's, that grew from uh, it transitioned from our ninth anniversary to our 10 year where we started doing the outdoor party and we closed down the South block of M88 and we get 4,000 people down here and um, really just kind of celebrate uh, bringing life and energy into this community and um, being good neighbors and having fun and enjoying life in Northern Michigan. Well, again, that's what I love about what you've done is you've created a sense of place that started with just that community, but now you've reached out so far that you're here, I'm here, and I still come all the way up to your place to be a part of that community. So you're doing everything right, especially well, the beer. Thanks. <laughs> well, we really appreciate it. And uh, of course, uh, we wouldn't be where we're at without all the support um, from all of our Michigan um, folks and folks beyond Michigan as well. We're in uh, other markets now. And I know that um, Paul will be joining us soon and we're out in uh, his market. So um, it's, it's fun to, to send, send Michigan out. And it's interesting because, uh, Michigan natives are everywhere across the country. Yep. And, yep. um, 
it's just cool because uh, everywhere we go, we always meet people from Michigan and they're always excited to see us. For those of you watching on the Facebook page, uh, please, and if, we're, if you're with us live, tell us if you've been up to Shorts in Bel Air, what you love about the place, maybe your favorite beers, favorite parties, favorite musicians you have seen over the years there, because there have been some great concerts. And you guys, Joe, you support the music community in your pub. I've been to some great shows there over the years. Yeah, music's been a big part of our business model from the beginning, a part of that culture component, as we spoke about Um it was just, uh, it was nothing that we could, I guess, uh, it wasn't a place where we could like charge a cover. It was just kind of part of the experience. I mean, no one was going to come all the way to Bel Air and um, pay for a concert per se. A lot of people just wanted to come in and eat food and uh, drink beer. But um, we kept that music program going. Um, proud to say that Green Sky Bluegrass was here as part of those, uh, part of those first years. And it's it's really been an important part of our business model um, because it does diversify sort of what we are able to offer in such a rural part of the state, and uh, it's also cool to um, to see the musicians who are are coming through and, and routing through, uh, you know, this part of the state. And, and it's important. I think everybody needs to know this: is that um, musicians and, and the arts are um, obviously really helping us through these times right now and. Um, we need to, to honor that and, uh, and support that um, because without, uh, without music and without the arts, um, some of us would be lost more so uh, than usual. And um, so I know when I'm driving around doing beer deliveries, I'm, I'm really uh, enjoying getting back into my music and uh, there's a nostalgia about it and there's uh, something peaceful about that. And uh, it's, just, uh, it's just something we're, we're proud and happy to support here. Well, music, both music and beer are the icing on the cake of life. They really are. Uh, so th thanks so much for helping us. Some of the cheers. things in yeah, the cheers. world are beer yeah. and music. Right? <laughs> exactly. Salud. So here we go. All right. There cheers, you go. guys. Thanks for cheers. having us. Well, everybody, if, if you're liking what you're seeing, again, share this, um, share this with your friends. Like it on Facebook. And please, if you get a chance, donate, 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 because there's a lot of people out there that need your help right now. Um, and speaking of people, we have a friend we need to bring back in with us right now. Oh, my gosh, it's Cowboy Dan. <laughs> you were in a tux last night to now. What are we going to call you, Tex? Well, you know, I was thinking I don't have a beautiful sombrero like uh, some of you guys did. But uh, I know we have bluegrass on the show tonight. So this was as close as I could get to a big, beautiful hat. It actually makes a lot more sense than my Fez did. So I'll give you points for that. Right. Well, hey, love the show. What Gabriel sure was great. I love that. Uh, I was thinking I took at least a half a year of Spanish. I don't remember un poquito of anything. And, you know, what a shame. You've got to use it or you lose it. Yeah. That's the way it is. Hey, um, guys, thanks again for being here tonight. And for all of you out there right now, thanks for joining us. We have a great show still to go. So, oh, my uh, gosh. Around. Really good stuff. And then all week, really cool stuff, really great guests, great music. And it's all in support of people that I know you care about as much as we do. Those uh, first line uh, hospitality workers who are out there usually literally serving us. Uh, you know, they're out of work right now. We have a lot of people in the hospitality world out of work. More than 300,000 people just in the hospitality part of travel and tourism here in Michigan. We're going to get them back to work as soon as we can. But right now, um, boy, they could re really use your help. So if you give anything you can, even just a couple of bucks, seriously, if you think about it, we have almost 10 million people in this great state that we call Pure Michigan. So if we had the average of just a couple of dollars per person, can you imagine that fund? It could really get up there. And the thing is, there's a great need. There really is a great need. So whatever you can, there's the website, mraef.org, and it's really easy to, to use. I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm putting donations in by the day just because I, it makes me feel good. And you can actually order the shirt that uh, Tom has right there, and, and I have here as well. You know, the thing is, Tom, I look more like a billboard because I'm a lot wider than you. So, you, know, so, you know, two peninsulas, one pure Michigan. And with this, we're saying something, aren't we? We're saying that it's unity that counts. It's taking care of our people right here, 
that counts. And that's what we're doing tonight. So please do what you can. We really would appreciate it. Yeah, you know, I had a conversation with a friend today that if there's one silver lining in this whole thing, it's that it's kind of teaching us to take a step back and really appreciate and miss our friends and neighbors and appreciate what they do and how they might need some help right now. It's it's sort of making you think more than you We're so busy doing all the time that we don't take time to think and reflect. And it's given us a chance to really think about stuff. So yeah, yeah people, people need our help right now. And now we, we can, if you can help, whatever you can, sure. you know. Yeah. We had a Zoom meeting with the staff today and I, you know, got to the end of it. I got a little emotional, actually. I said, geez, I can't believe how much I miss you guys. I'd never thought I'd miss the staff. You know, so it's like, <laughs> I really do. I really miss everybody. I miss seeing everybody. We miss those connections, don't we? And soon we'll be back out there. We'll be connecting with people in places all throughout Pure Michigan. And we're hoping that you spend all your travel time, all your travel dollars this year in Pure Michigan, because it'll it'll get the economy going. But uh, man, uh, do whatever you can to help right now too. So take control. It's the other thing we miss. We miss this kind of control thing. Take control. Be a part of the solution by giving to this fund. Well, to thanks again, Dave. Thanks for and thanks for letting us be a part of it too. You better go tie up your horse, though. I think it's. Hey, uh, I think <laughs> I gotta go take care of. I don't know what the horse. Because right now we've got a real special musical treat for you. Um, this guy, if you love bluegrass, this guy's from Kalamazoo. He's from a band called Green Sky Bluegrass. Um, very talented person, really a great guy. His name is Paul Hoffman. There you are. Hey, Paul, how's it going? Um, great, how are you guys? Before you play a song for us, I have to ask you one question. I play guitar. Here it is. See that? See the size of this neck? Now, in, yeah. in Green Sky Bluegrass, you play a mandolin, right? I do play a mandolin. How do you that. make? How do you get your fingers on that tiny little neck? How do you make chords? Spread them out this way. Oh, that's like a finger style neck too. This this guitar I have is made in Michigan, and uh, it's got like a wider finger style neck too. This is a Robinson guitar that was made in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Yep, home of uh, Gibson guitars. Yeah. Yep. Well, you got a couple songs for us. I do. Should I? play two and then we're going to chat again sounds good to me sounds like right? a plan yeah it sounds like a plan hey it was good to see joe short on here green sky used to play at shorts a lot when we were becoming a band cutting our teeth and uh joe would put us up for two nights because uh you know he i guess he figured to get people to drive all the way up there you had to give them two nights which seems crazy after all the miles i've driven but uh we learned a lot about being a band at at joe short's place and uh you know, everything from learning songs from the second night to how to stay up all night drinking shorts beer. That's like 7%. So, <laughs> so I feel at home. Uh, here's a song for you called uh, Ashes. It's a love song I wrote for my partner. She's upstairs making dinner for my family. <laughs> Love you this much than I will. It is 
it's the morning's time to go. Let's not finish what we have begun. I lay down here on the floor. I hold you up, hope to make you more. But if my love is strong enough to lift you up. Maybe I can think I've done enough. As she's in the moonlight, make the time stand still. No one's loved this much. Let's not finish what we have done. All right. There's another one called Courage for the Road. It's a little bit of courage for staying off the road now, I suppose. It's proven hard to let go. Didn't think it'd be different, you know. But I want all this live before you take a breath. With a bit courage for the road. This gives me something to get through. But then when you're empty, there's nothing left for me. Same in me. Without you around me, I 
Fantastic. Paul Hoffman, Green Sky Bluegrass. Uh, it's so great to hear you uh, live here. We're going to have Dave Bruza up in a, in a little bit as well. So I can't wait to have him on. Uh, tell us a little bit about the uh, Green Sky story. I think it's, it's funny because the campers out there, the people that know you guys, they're intense followers. They know every single detail. And uh, by the way, if you're watching on Facebook, feel free to comment and, and share this with your friends because it's really cool to have these two guys from the band on this special show today. Um, but uh, Paul, tell us a little bit about the background of the band. And I know you're from Kalamazoo uh, and how you became this. I mean, you guys are playing major festivals all over the country, really. Um, you're selling out venues. You played the Ryman Auditorium. It's not like, you know, and you're not some unknown band from Michigan. Yeah, we're popular in small circles is what we usually say. <laughs> People who like acoustic music or uh, acoustic rock and roll or something. We, uh, yeah, I'm from Muskegon, Michigan. I moved to Kalamazoo to go to college and met Dave, who's going to be up next, and our banjo player, uh, Mike Bont. And we started being blue, Green Sky Bluegrass. We toured up and down 131, US 31, for years, playing in Manistee, Shorts, Traverse City, uh, Muskegon, Grand Haven. And then we decided to take the, take the act um across the country and started playing everywhere picked up a bass player and picked up a dobro player and man we just played a lot of shows for a lot of years we started playing out of state in 2005 ish 2004 and uh we just worked hard playing a lot of shows and now we get to play at red rocks and we usually do an event in mexico every year and just play all, all sorts of great festivals we love uh, many of which are not happening this year. And it's our 20th year as a band this year. And I guess we get the year off for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the magic of what you guys do is you kind of, you're so much more than bluegrass. You've kind of pushed the boundaries of that genre and you're influenced by it, but you're so much more than that. And uh, like John was saying, you've got this really loyal following that they just love everything you guys do. Um, and to go to go from Kalamazoo, Michigan. Did you guys ever play uh, the Old Dog Tavern there? We sure did in London. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to go from those little places that we've all known and loved to just being this huge phenomenon. What's that feel like? That's got to be so weird. Uh, it feels really good, and we are so grateful. And it's not lost on us that the uh, loyalty of those people from the beginning coming along and people traveling to see us in other places. Sometimes we play a place we hadn't played very often and it'd be filled with people we know from all the other places. So yeah. uh, it's, it really feels like a community of people that I miss a, a lot right now. Uh, you know, there's something really grounding for me. I've always wanted to be a performer, probably more than a musician and playing these songs and seeing the people look at back, look back at me and seeing the way they affect our fans is a really important thing for me. And, I'm still playing from my basement down here between my two posters, uh, <laughs> but I can't see everybody and I miss them a ton. So I'm glad to be here playing for you there, but uh, I can't wait till you can be here in yeah. front of me again. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I said, I know we're going to have Dave on a, a little later in the show. Uh, real quick, could, could you uh, tell me some of your favorite Michigan acts out there? Because there are some talented uh, groups out there, soloists, they're doing some great music that we are just not, you know, finding out about. Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, most of my favorites are probably bands that are a lot older, you know, and we were starting out as a band stepping in. It was a huge influence for me. Joshua Davis. Joshua Davis. Uh, yeah. We, uh, when I first was learning the mandolin, I actually went to a party after they played at Bell's one time that was at Joe Short's place. And he was serving beer out of a, a kegerator 
cooler kind of thing that he had brewed in, in the house, I guess. Uh, but stepping in, it was a huge band for me and uh, May Early Wine, Seth Bernard. There's a lot of stuff now, though, the Accidentals and um, and a couple bands that aren't around anymore. My Dear Disco, I used to love. Yeah. Uh, love that Michigan music scene. Yeah, there's so much talent here that, um, and thanks to the internet, now you can discover and find so many new people that, you know, in the past it was so much harder to do. So, yeah, I mean, you guys, you guys actually even open the uh, the beer garden at Bell's every year, don't you? We Except did it this for year. like 13 years or 11 years or something like that. We turned it into a festival in uh, in Hoxieville, Michigan, or Wellston, really near Cadillac. Yeah, uh, called Camp Green Sky, and Bell's is, was a sponsor on that. Um, we've had to postpone this year's event to next year, unfortunately. But well, this whole thing, <laughs> this whole thing we're doing is to help musicians, bartenders, waiters, uh, hospitality people, hotel workers. Um, so it really means a lot that you came out and did this. That you know, because these people really need our help right now. It's good to feel like I'm home a little bit. <laughs> Paul, do you think you can do one more song for us? I would love to. I'm going to play a song I wrote about Michigan. Ah. Uh, I wrote it about moving out of Michigan, technically. But <laughs> oh, it's great. Called, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's called Tied Down. It's a longing, uh, longing feeling for not wanting to leave, I suppose. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank, Thank you. you.
Paul Hoffman, Green Sky Bluegrass. Thank you so much. Incredible, my friend. Great Thanks, Thank you so much for having me. I miss all my family back there in Michigan. My brother and his wife are both uh, nurses. So uh, big shout out to my brother, Derek. It was his birthday yesterday and his wife, Krista, for working for the people. I love you all, Michigan. Take care. Thanks, Paul. It's great having him on, uh, Tom. Uh, in fact, the fans, if you are fans of Green Sky Bluegrass, we're going to have Dave Bruza on a little later. But I know the show's running a little later than we expected, but uh, that's okay because we still have to talk tacos and tequila. Yeah. <laughs> I am prepared if you notice over my shoulder here. <laughs> I, I, at the other shoulder. Yeah, there, there you go. go. I'm backwards. <laughs> All right. Joining us right now is my good friend, Carlos Perez from Chilangos in Jackson, Michigan. How, How are you doing, my friend? You guys? How are you doing, John? Hey, Carlos. Really good. Oh, well, I'm, I'm so happy to be here right now, you know, and I'm ready for the tequila, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we get to tequila, uh, I know you've had a busy day at Chilangos. Cinco de Mayo is a busy day for Mexican restaurants. Uh, yes. How busy was it for you today? So right now, we have already a lot of orders right now. We don't close yet. There's already people outside waiting for food. Uh, calls and calls and calls and calls. It's amazing community how these support the local businesses in here in Jackson. You know, we have an amazing community. Too. Well, we named you uh, one of Michigan's best, best Mexican restaurants. Amy Sherman and I came there to Jackson. Just love your place. Our, my second time there, we also made you part of Michigan's best taco as well. Uh, yeah. Speaking of tacos... Uh, what do you have uh, to show off? I heard you made some carnitas, maybe? Yes, 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 yes. I have it here. You know, it's waiting only for sharing with you and, you know, show you that. Thing. <laughs> now, for, pe for people who don't know, what are carnitas? Well, carnitas is a pulled pork. It's right. the traditional and a specific state in Mexico, what is Michoacan, right, John? Yes, Michoacan, the other Michigan, they always say. <laughs> the other Michigan. That is my, it's the, the traditional, uh, one of the more uh, traditional meats, you know, uh, uh, stapled of uh, street food, you know, or street meats, you know, for making a traditional tacos. And it's pulled pork, and uh, marinade, 12 hours, and a special recipe, you know, um, like a couple different citrus, uh, option like an orange, lime, garlic, uh, and it's like a, almost like a 12 ingredients just for marinating. What, what's this, what's the real secret to a great taco? You know, the real secret for the real taco is, well, having a tortilla. So <laughs> that way you have having a taco. But for, it's, it's, it's one of, the, of these kind of dishes right now, all the time, you know, for many years, is, is the simplicity about the structure about the dish because it's a tortilla, a meat, you know, you created amazing different ways. You know, the secret is about what you like in that point or, or that kind of fusions when you can make it. Like an art style, what is Chilango style? What is come from what I name? It's more like a, a city, an urban uh, uh, hip, you know, mixed with the tradition too. You know, it's more, more like a urban and, and a street taco with the old traditional for many years we created the simple about tortilla with meat onion and cilantro a squeeze of lime <laughs> yes you know and and salsa you know for a good taco it's a good salsa too yeah, you know. I'm, a, I'm a cilantro freak. Cilantro <laughs> I could, put it on ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, for me, it is, this is an amazing combination. You know, the, you can have an, a different kind of ingredients and fusions about making a taco. But the traditional is onion, cilantro, the meat, squeeze the lime, and yes, the salsa, you know. Carlos, one of the things that we uh, also loved about Chilangos is that uh, at the Cantina Grill, which is not open right now, like most restaurants, yeah. doing you're just doing carry out there at the uh, burrito bar. Yeah. Uh, but um, when when it is open and people can visit you, you have more than 200 tequilas, my friend. And yeah. <laughs> Tom's already bringing his out right now. Yes. Okay. 
this is my this is my my poison of choice. I lo I love tequila. I've always loved it. It agrees with me. <laughs> uh, so help Tom. He it sounds like he already knows. Help yeah. Tom and anyone watching, folks. And if you love tequila, tell us some of your favorite tequila brands. What you love about it? Maybe some of your favorite drinks. Put them in the uh, Facebook comments. We'd love to hear from you about whether you maybe you tell us about you've been to Chilangos as well. But take us through real quick. You have three styles of tequila that you want to show us. Let's start with this first one. Yep, we start with the well. This is Casamigos, you know, but it's blanco. What is silver? So uh, a lot of people thinking about tequila. You know, it's like a you only use it for a while. We can open, right? <laughs> My, mine is already open. I don't know what you guys are doing. Oh darn it! <laughs> yeah, tequila glass. Well, the thing, the thing we want to use right now, you know, is to put it over there and taste it. And uh, the silver, what is like hoven. You know, it's right away for the distillation and put it in the bottle. Right, they distill it, put it right in the bottle. So yeah, put a couple of days in the uh, stainless steel barrels, the only for seed a little bit there. But it's about the taste is a bold and flavor is strong about the blue agave. Hmm, okay. it's good. It's smooth too. Yeah. So what, what am I picking up? There? What are some of the aromas I'm picking up? Yeah, what is, what is it that thing, you know, is that right away is coming out with the blue agave because mm -hmm. the blue agave, you have the, the more pure in the blancos, you have the more pure flavor and about what is the tequila, you know, beside the age of, because we have a reposado too, obviously, yeah. but the, 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 the blanco is more for mixed drinks. It's more for this kind of pure and bold flavor of the blue agave, what is like, what it is right well, yeah if you're gonna if i'm gonna make a margarita i do it with a blanco with the blanco right. you know or whatever the other kind of drinks you know or uh, mixed drinks you know mm -hmm. with a, the blanco is the way is the way to go all right let's go to the reposado next now is, reposado. It, is it true that reposado means rested in wood uh reposado yeah it's rest, it's rest. The, rest. It's the, the reposado is the rest the rested in a in in a white oak barrels you know, um, and it's like a making like a between less and two months, you know, less than two months and um, in the white oak barrel, less than a year is what he's making reposado. Where the Blanco wasn't aged at all. This it's is aged about well. seven to eight months. Now yeah. with, th with this reposado, I, you can taste notes of vanilla. Yeah. Um, spice. Yeah. Um, it's very, it's kind of very intensely spice aroma. That is come from with the wood, you know, the char, mm -hmm. the charcoal wood. Was the char of the wood, right. The char mm -hmm. wood, you know, and it's the turn about the yellow, you know, it's about the age. It's the same concept about bourbon, you know, or, 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 or scotch, you know, but it's different time. It's different, uh, less time for do that. You guys already tried? Yeah, we tried. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Way ahead of you. <laughs> Salud. <laughs> Salud. When I tell my friends that I drink tequila, they, there's tequila got a bad name for so many years. They wouldn't serve it at weddings. They thought about the bottle with the little red hat on it. But a fine aged tequila is like a great bourbon or a great whiskey or a great. Yeah. It's a, it's a wonderful. I I don't mix my tequila with anything. No, but it's uh, for me. You know, I I do because I like the traditional drinks. You know, like palomas, cantaritos, or, or, or more with my tradition or my culture about drink tequila is come from. But but for me, the tequila, I like reposados and obvious añejos and, and sipet. And that is, I, I enjoy like a scotch or a bourbon, you know. Right. I, so I let's, let's get to the last one. Terrible. Let's get to the last one, which is the uh, añejo. Añejo. Yep. Añejo, this is like at uh, two years. Yep. This is aged for two years. Yes, it's, a, it's a, at least in a two years. Uh, at three years, that what is considered like a añejo. And uh, after yeah, that, it's extra añejos too. Yeah, reposados are, are, are usually my go-to, but añejos, um, well, they're a little, little, usually a little more expensive. Yes. With, um, more intense flavor. Yes. And it's, a, it's intense flavor and in, 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 uh, in the flavor, but it's more smooth too. Yeah. Now we should mention that this tequila we're sampling is um, 
George Clooney's tequila. Yeah, it is. Yeah, George Clooney. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 I, I choose Casamigos, you know, and it's, it's for show because the owners is the George Clooney, you know, is the, is the, the tequila, but it's making it in, in, in Jalisco, in Mexico. Yeah. Because you can make tequila in other parts of the world. Is these not come from, or you can call it tequila, it don't come from for Jalisco, Mexico. Right. So, and, and this is a harvest, and it's a really good uh, fields over there. I have the opportunity to see it too. And, and the agaves is like um, eight years old agaves for making a, and the tequila. So the six to eight years old agave plant waiting for making a tequila. That is a lot of, a, a lot of work too, but I'm making an amazing tequila too. With the other ones too, you know. But well, Carlos, we, we thank you very much for being on today's thank show. You. Um, and, you know, good luck to you and all your workers because I know everyone is, you know, ready to get back to work. Anything yeah. that you want to add to what's happening there in, in Jackson? Well, this, you know, and I, uh, beside what I trying to go and, and, and I, I want to focus more on is about we have an amazing community. We have an amazing community where we want to work together and support together every single time. Um, uh, uh, business owners, entrepreneurs, uh, people are, <laughs> you know, an, a, a, an amazing, an amazing uh, uh, medical industry, you know, to what is working hard every single day. You know, you see, you, you see you walking uh, in the streets, you know, or, or you see it with the mask and everything, but uh, you see that hub, you see that, that unified in our community, you know, and, and I 100% in other communities too, in other towns it's happened the same, but I, I talked for Jackson about that thing because in whatever level and in whatever yeah. thing we're doing, we every time we're trying to go together and support together and That's more in this kind of situation. And it's the amazing, the, the best cure what we have is about we together. So, and that is- and it's Good like, way to put it, my friend. Thank you to Chilango's continued success and salud, amigo. And salud, salud amigo. <laughs> Take care. Take care. Well, so let me collect my thoughts now Now that we've tasted tequila. Now, remember, everybody at home, don't try it. Well, no, yeah, actually, you can try this at home. That's yeah, you fine. can. Yeah, that's that's the one good thing. Um, again, uh, share this. If, you, if you're enjoying it, share it on Facebook. Um, donate if you can. Um, and, again, these T-shirts, $5 from these T-shirts goes to the cause. So, if you get a chance, but right now I think it's time for some more music, right, John? Yeah, sounds sounds great. Uh, who do yeah. we have up next? Next we have a gentleman that uh, I first met when we featured him on our TV show, Don Dupe Dupree. Um, he was known as the Rock and Roll Pie Guy. So this guy knows what it's like to run a restaurant. Um, he's actually a River Rouge fireman. Actually, you're a fire captain, right? Third time here in town. Sorry, I don't know. <laughs> Can you hear me? Uh, can't hear him. Oh. How about me? Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you, brother. Yes, oh, okay. this is a glitch that happened uh, last, last night as right. well. All right, so Dupe, uh, tell us a, a little bit about what song you're going to play next. Um, I'm going to play a song called, T I'll just do uh, two tunes because I know you guys are on the show on time. You got it, man. Yeah, it's called Tale of Two Cities, all right? All right, let's hear right. it. That's a tale of two cities. One is shine, the other is gritty. One is laugh, one is cry, one is live, while the other is dying. The old main street is going to parties, while the back street is going to dinner. The story that we all know too well. It's a tale of two cities. I hear downtown near the building another high ride. Just last week they shut down more schools on the city's west side. Broke, hands are tied. Makes it hard to even try to fight. The old Main Street is going to party. 
how the back street is going to hell. It's a story that we all know too well. Oh, it's a tale. Look, two cities. It's a tale. Look, two cities. There's rich and there's poor. Since there ain't no middle anymore. I ain't here to protest nothing. I'm just here to report. It's a tale of two cities. That's it now. <laughs> there we go. All right. Still no time. I'll hear no time. Well, what I, what, well then I'm, I'm just going to say real quick what I oh, love. There about, is. Can you hear me? A little in and out. Yes, sir. Yeah. What I love about you is you're a working man's uh, songwriter. Uh, and you make people think. And you write about the, the real human condition. Um, and I think that maybe comes from you live in River Rouge. You're a fire captain. Um, you live and you work with real people. I mean, the, the, the city saying down there, I think, is uh, where hard work lives. Um, it, yeah. So, I mean, it's real life, real life stories. And they're beautiful songs. Um, and, I mean, you've, you're an award-winning songwriter and singer. And just the fact that you're still working in the firehouse. What's, what's going on at the firehouse right now? Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a little weird, man. I mean, I can get into it, but it's pretty depressing sometimes. But, you know, I mean, it, it's kind of cool as well. Uh, it's just crazy. It's a lot of cuss and things like that and stuff. But um, we had some pretty messed up tragedies in this situation that we got going. And, uh, you know, yeah, it's just got to remember, man, just these people that are out there, uh, especially these EMS cats and people like that that are going to these, they have to go in these houses and do stuff in the police and fire. These, you know, man, just pray for them and try and help them as much as you can, you know, yeah, because well, it's, it's, it's pretty hard for everybody. Well, we were talking about earlier that the one thing that this is doing to all of us is it's making us realize we got to help each other. Um, we do. And that's what this whole event is about, is trying to help people, musicians like you, trying to help, you know, restaurant workers, trying to help uh, hospitality people, because everybody's hurting right now. So we're asking people to give as much as they can. Um, so I appreciate that you came on uh, and you're helping us through this. Hey, man, anything you guys need, you guys have always been super good to me. And uh, speaking about helping people, it's been my last tune. And uh, like I said, just try and help as much as you can, just like you said. This song's called Helping Hand. When was the last time that you helped? Stop to say hello to your neighbor. I picked up the phone, called him once his boy raised you. His day was doing all right. When was the last time I tried to be? Somebody's helping hand. Pick them up. Get them back on their feet again. They might be way off in a rut. Down in a hole. Just tell them to reach up. Grab a hole. Say you're stuck with the 
cause it to hold it up. Yeah, you think. Yeah, you think. I'd be better off with gold in. Seems like they got. Got you coming and going. But yeah, you're doing all right. Appreciate you guys very much. And like I say, try and help. Um, after this, uh, we got a lot of friends playing. Matt the Myths, if you guys go over to uh, Detroit Country, they're going to be accepting do donations to get to charity. My buddy Matt the Myths and uh, uh, Ryan Dillahay. Um, and like I said, what you guys are doing is great. And we appreciate you so much. Well, thanks for doing this, Dupe. And thank keep, keep on keeping on and keep on. I mean, just thanks just for being a fireman. I mean, that alone. Yeah, keep the lights on, brother. You know how we do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, bud. Well, Dupe, thank you so much. That was uh, incredible, and very you're so talented. I'm, I'm glad to discover your music tonight. Uh, all right, folks, coming up in just a few minutes, we're going to have Dave Bruza from uh, Green Sky Bluegrass. I know you can't wait for that. We know the show is running a little late, but stick around for Dave because he is incredible as well. But right now, we got to bring up uh, a different Dave, Dave Lorenz <laughs> from Travel Michigan. How you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm doing okay. Loving the show. Great job, guys. Thanks. From, you know, from we might even keep you around for the rest of the week. Pardon? <laughs> we might even keep you around for the rest of the week. Oh, <laughs> well, sorry, boss, we're going a little late, but I'll tell you what, uh, it's a worthy cause. Sure is. And so there's the website, mrlaef.org. If you haven't uh, given any donation, if you could just give something, that'd be great. Just, just something be fantastic. You know, every dollar we put into this goes to people who are displaced right now in the uh, hospitality travel world. We have so many people in need right now uh, and we'll get them back to work eventually. You know, when we're allowed to travel again, we're going to be traveling in Michigan. I know you can't wait. I know I can't wait to get to Jackson. I'm going to check out uh, Carlos's place. I just can't wait. Because, man, I'm hungry right now. <laughs> you know, I don't drink, so, you know, that's no big deal. But, uh, man, that looked fantastic. And I'm looking forward to getting up at Joe Shorts and, and everything. But right now we can't travel. So we might as well enjoy these shows each night, 7 o'clock, through the rest of the week. Right. We've got a lot of great surprises for you. So tune in. And if you could, just give what you can. Uh, share the, the news about these uh, concerts and these uh, performances, variety shows, I'm calling them, the rest of the week with your friends and, and have them join us because, you know, we are two peninsulas, but we're one pure Michigan, just like Paul was talking about, about unity. And Carlos mentioned that as well. Let's come together and let's think of other people because we are stronger when we're working together. How do you get one of those snazzy T-shirts? Because I understand $5 from the purchase of every one of those shirts also goes to the cause. You know, when I gave it the mrlaef.org site, I saw there was a little tab there where you could order them and you can get them right there. And then five bucks goes to the cause. So that's really good. So check that out. And uh, it really is cool. Two peninsulas, one pure Michigan. If it looks good on me, it'll look good on anybody. <laughs> check it out. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Dave. Uh, Thanks, great Dave. to have you back. Stick around, though, because we're going to bring you back a little later yeah. in the show, although we're kind of coming to a close here, but not before more music, right, Tom? Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, Green Sky Flashback. We've got um, <laughs> a little bit more uh, from Green Sky uh, Bluegrass. Actually, this time we've got Dave Bruza, who's going to be with us, um, who I, 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 I understand was originally oh. a drummer, but uh, decided to play something else. Now, right now, all I can see, there he is. <laughs> hey. 
Can you hear me? Hey, buddy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good. Good. Can you hear us? Yeah. <laughs> I'm all over the place. <laughs> What's the first song you're going to play for us tonight? I'm going to play a song called Wings for Wheels. Let's do it. Dave, that was amazing. Number one, number two, who's doing all the camera work? <laughs> well, um, I have a good friend here, my friend Trey. He has a company called Two Hundred One Productions, and uh, they encouraged me to drive to St. Louis last week because I've been all alone in Denver, where I'm living now. Yeah. And uh, we were going to make videos, and then this, you guys asked me to come on your show, and I was like, well, let's try it. <laughs> Well, it's it's the nicest produced piece we've had so far, and you sound amazing, absolutely amazing. Thanks. What is it down here in front of me? Yeah. What what is it like uh, for you right now? Because I mean, your your band is used to touring uh, incessantly, and now you are stable. What's what's life like for you? You know, it's it. At first, it was a nice reset. Um, you know, we've been touring pretty hard for a long time and uh it was nice to kind of just pull back a little bit um i had a lot of things in my personal life that i was dealing with and um it's been very productive and it's nice to you know be around some people now which is which is good we've all been quarantined and now 
we can uh, be together. Yeah, we, we were talking about that earlier, how this the only silver lining in this whole thing is it's sort of forced reflection. It's it's making us all sort of sit back, think twice about where we're going in life, um, the people in our lives, reconnecting with people, um, thinking about how people might need our help right now. So yeah, it's uh, it's done that. Absolutely. I, I think, uh, I mean, it's it's up and down. You know, I have, I have my good days and bad days, I, I'm sure, like everyone else. But uh, yeah, a little bit of reset is always a good thing. Dave, we know you're going to play one more song for us, at least at least one more or maybe a couple more. But uh, what do you love about Michigan? I know you're not living here right now, but what do you love about this state? Oh, I love the state. I mean, I spent most of my life there in Michigan. I grew up in Kalamazoo. I was born and raised there. Um, it was a difficult decision to leave, but... I love coming back in the summertime. I love the lakes. I have a lot of good friends there. It's just such a beautiful, beautiful state. And there's just such wonderful people there. And, you know, Bell's Brewery is pretty fantastic. <laughs> Brewery, pretty fantastic Founders Brewery. I mean, I could sit here and for an hour and list breweries that taste great. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I always love to come back and visit. I was just there in February. I got to play with my, my rock band. We played at Bell's in Kalamazoo and we played at Oda Supply over in Ferndale, Michigan. And it was really nice to see a lot of a lot of old friends and just be back. It's just such a wonderful state. And it's so unique too. You know, you just you know, everyone knows you're from Michigan when you get a map out. So. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what do you want to say to uh the Camp Green Sky people? They're disappointed they can't come up to Wellston this year for for the big three-day event. They're gonna come back next year, obviously, hopefully. Uh, what do you want to say to them? Because they're watching right now and and really bummed they can't be all together. Just, you know, hang on and hope for the best. I think that's what, hold on and hope for the best. That's what Paul said. <laughs> so you got another song for us? Sure. I'm going to play an old, uh, old traditional tune, see if I can remember it, called Wild Bill Jones. Huh? Take a little walk. I came across that wild Bill Jones. He's walking and talking by my true lover's side, and I beg him to leave her alone. Said I'm a man. Twenty-one, too old to be in control. So I pulled my revolver out from my side and I destroyed that poor poor soul. He reared and he staggered and he fell to the ground. He gave out one dying mole. He wrapped his hands round my little girl's neck, saying, Honey, won't you take me home? on me, boys, and lead me to that free army. Today was the last of Wild Bill Jones. Team, I'll be the last of me. And lead me down the path of sin. 
today was the last of Wild Bill Jones. Tomorrow be the last of me. That's awesome, Dave. Awesome. Classic, classic, classic song. Thanks so much for that. You know what? I'm loving this. Your setup. The sound's so great. I think fans want to hear more, folks. If you are a, a Green Sky Bluegrass fan, uh, please share this link with your with your friends right now. Let them know because uh, Dave, I think we can get you to do at least at least a couple more songs, right? Sure, sure, I can. Unless you got some place to go. <laughs> I, I tell you what, Dave, do one more song, and then we'll uh, bring Dave Lorenz back on to. Tell us a couple more words, and we'll have you close up the show. Sound cool? Sure, sure, sure. Let me get tuned back up here. I want to hang out there with him. That's no a nice kidding. place. <laughs> I have some nice friends, you know. Um, I'm nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I've been living alone for for a while, and uh, you know, the first month of this whole thing was uh, it's pretty tough. Yeah face myself every day <laughs> but uh you know after watching a bunch of old baseball games for so long i you know i had to do something and uh i i uh, got in the my truck a couple days ago and just drove straight through from from denver to st louis and here i am what are you gonna play next i'm gonna attempt to play a song called like reflections that i wrote i, I mean i wrote wings for wheels and of course that last song is a. Uh, traditional tune this is a song i wrote uh, a while back but i haven't been playing it a whole lot so we'll see how this goes If I was a mountain, standing tall and proud, shall I tell you still I'd wait for you? If you were the stars, and I was the moon, dawn would be all for you. Your light shines through the valley, while my heart shakes the ground of each never ending like reflections on a pond like reflections on a pond love it Lightning hits the ground run, sparking flames that roam for miles. Lonely is the wind that keeps on moan, like a lover's kiss by and by. Your light shines through the van. Love is never ending Like reflections on a bottle Like reflections on a bottle
river still time and cut through elation hard as tears and soft as stone the sky is a memory and the sun has a beat a warming glow of your soul your light shines through the valley My heart shakes the ground Love is never ending Like reflections on a pond Like reflections on a pond Beautiful, beautiful, Dave. If you, Dave, if you can sit tight for just one second, we're going to bring back another Dave, Dave Lorenz, and then we're going to let you play us out. Is that cool? I think Dave. he's cool with that. Okay. <laughs> well, like I said, where are you going? Speak you, to Dave's. You, you better be wanting music from the other day because I got nothing, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, the show's going great. Really appreciate it. And man, talk about the camera work and the sound work. Yeah, uh, man, Dave's really got it down. And so appreciate all of our performers who have been uh, joining us. We have such a great lineup for the rest of the week. You're going to want to be there. It's all in support of those displaced hospitality workers out there, like our musicians that are usually playing at bars. You know, I think about all the times I've been up at Mackinac Island or some of the the crap brew places we were talking about earlier on the show. Think about all the, the great music I've been entertained by, by Michiganders yeah. who are really, you know, putting it out there for us every night normally. But right now they're not working because of this darn virus. So uh, we need to help them out as much as we can. So please, if you've not already done it, or even if you already have, think about going to mrlaef.org and uh, just making a small donation, whatever you can do. Uh, especially for those of us who are working right now, let's do what we can to help other people. This is one of those things that we can control. I know I feel like I'm, you know, I just want to be able to do something. Well, this is something you can do. I know you feel the same way. So please consider that uh, every dollar counts. It all adds up. We have a lot of people out there. So be one of those people who are part of the solution and, and, and join us. And then, and then join us the rest of this week too. Yeah, I was going to say, join us tomorrow night because tomorrow night, Tomorrow night's show is going to be great. We're going to have um, Jeff Blaschel, the head coach of the Detroit Red Wings. We're going to have Max and Ruth uh, Bloomquist doing some great folk music. Uh, Chef Max Hardy is going to be on with some great Jamaican-African uh, fusion food. Uh, the Accidentals are going to be here performing for us. And Ginger Z from ABC News is going to be here. She's actually a Michigan. She's from Rockford, Michigan. Oh, she's a really nice young lady. I was with her exactly a year ago tomorrow. So we'll be ah. together again a year away from each other. Yeah. So tomorrow we got a great show. So come on back tomorrow. Tell your friends, tell your family. We'll be here. It's going to be a great show. And hey, guys, thanks again for all you're doing. Uh, the entire crew, great job. Uh, can't wait uh, to hear one more song tonight. All right, Dave. Well, thank you very much. Well, here we go. Uh, Dave uh, Bruce, are you still around? Yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> we want to thank you again for uh, giving of your time and helping this uh, great cause to helping our hospitality and tourism employees around the state of Michigan. Uh, I know that uh, and musicians as well, those that are hurting right now, they need some extra cash. So thank you for for doing this for us. Yeah, well, it's my pleasure. It's my stay pleasure. safe, stay sane. Yeah, I mean, I haven't been able to do anything live in two months. I just haven't. So this is really a, a really special treat for me. So thanks for having me. And uh, I think I'm going to play a John Prine tune for y'all. Fitting. All the snows turn to water. A Christmas day has come and gone. A broken toys and faded colors. 
all that's left to linger on. Oh, I hate graveyards and old pawn shops. Before they always bring me tears. I can't forgive the way they've robbed me of my childhood souvenirs. The memories they can't be bought. They can't be won. Carnival's free But it took me years To get those souvenirs And I don't know how They slipped away from me Broken hearts and dirty windows Make life difficult to see That's why last night and this morning I always look the same to me oh, I hate reading old love letters To read. I can't forgive the way they've robbed me of my sweetheart's souvenirs. A memory that can't be bought, that can't be won, the carnivals for free. Well, it took me years to get those souvenirs. And I don't know how it slipped away from me. Dave Bruza from the Green Sky Bluegrass Band. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Well, it's been a fun, fun night. Uh, I know we went extremely long. Yeah, thank, uh, thank, but goodness I, for, thank goodness we're ending soon because I'm using the daylight in my office for my light. It's getting dark in here. So I thought you were going to say you're running out of tequila. Oh, no. I've got a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Three bottles, though. They'll, they'll take care of it. Maybe we'll save some for tomorrow, too, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, so if uh, if you stuck with us all, all night, thank you so much. And come back and see us again tomorrow night. we got lots of lots of fun, lots of surprises. Take care, everyone. Have a great night. I'm John Gonzalez. And I'm Tom Dalden. See you soon.